is her ruler and her Lord. He is all things came to be by him and for him. And Paul said, He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he's the head of the body of the church, and he's the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself might have first place in everything. It was the Father's good pleasure. All the fullness to dwell in him. And Isaiah said, It pleased the Lord to crush him, putting him to grief, if he would render himself as a guilt offering. John said it this way. He said he was in the beginning. He was God. He was with God. All things came to be through him. And apart from him, nothing is coming to being that is coming to be. John said in him was life. And the life was the light of men. And there on that tree, he became a dad. He became a dad on that tree. Hang on, let me get this real quick, Dave. He became a dad. And I know as a dad of four kids, when he became a dad on that tree, he was making a view on that tree. As a dad, and I'll tell you, men and women, as a father of two young girls, every girl wants to be daddy's little girl. Well, I'll tell you, on that tree, as a dad, he was God, he was a man. But on that tree, he became your dad. And there on that tree, he stretched out his arms on your behalf. And many of you think love like this is only for girls. Follow me into the National Football League where I speak to these teams around the country. Where I talk to the Chiefs and the Giants and the Dolphins and the other teams. And I see grown men crying, literally weeping on those locker room floors. Because here under the cross, the men realize they've got a dad. And here he cried on your behalf, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do to me. And the scripture said there was a couple of guys crucified, one on each side. They call them thieves. Probably a couple of fatherless guys like so many of us in this arena today. And there one of those fatherless men cries out, Jesus, could you remember me when you come into your kingdom? And if you've ever been adopted, I have grandchildren that are adopted from Africa. And we love our adopted kids as much or more than our real kids. And there as Jesus adopts this man next to him on that cross, he cries out, yes, I remember thee. Today you shall be with me in paradise. And you can hear Jesus crying out adoption as he adopts this thief into his heart. Okay, Dave, don't take this long. Because today we're going to ask you, What's your song? The press of our student body had a song. These kids behind me have a song. Well, what's your song? Gang, if you were an American Idol, what would you sing? But not for Jennifer Lopez, not for Keith Urban. Hey, Ellie will take you. That stuff disappears faster than you can show up in Hollywood. No one even remembers American Isles hardly from years and years before, hardly. But what if God was up on that chair, not Keith Urban? What if Jesus was in that other chair, not Jennifer Lopez? Men, what if your wife was in the third chair, the girl you're going to marry someday? The girl that will have your children. What if your 16-year-old son was in that chair? The boy who's going to look up to you, Ben. Someday the boy who's going to want you to be his dad of purity. A dad, Ben, that he can respect and he can appreciate. After all the marijuana is gone and all the alcohol has quit flowing, after all the sex and all the drugs and all the rock and roll, who cares? I'm talking about when you're standing in front of Jesus Christ for eternity. What's your song going to be? Who's your song going to be then? Well, I'll tell you, you got one walk-up song. And over the years, tens of thousands of young Christian kids literally have decided in this theater 
that Jesus was going to be their song. So the other day I was in a guitar store buying Jennifer, my little granddaughter, a guitar. And I thought about you literally in Orlando, Florida, where Jennifer plays one of Disney's princesses. I can't tell you what she does, but anyways. And I looked over there and I saw a guitar pick. And I called the company that makes these guitar picks. And I said, I need 8,000 guitar picks, because I'm fixing to see 8,000 kids. And on the guitar pick, it says, he is my song. And I'm going to ask you this morning, if he really, if you had one song to sing, and you're walking down the hallways of your school on Monday, boys, the next time you're with a girl on a date, the next time you get out your iPhone, you can put anything on that phone you want. You put porn on that phone, and you can put rock and roll, drugs, or anything else you want. I want to ask you, after this great weekend, if he is your song, and you want to sing one song like these kids have been singing for years and years, I'm going to invite you as this little worship band comes up to finish. I'm going to ask you to come down here. And I'm going to ask you all by yourself, without your friends, just you and Jesus, to come down here and take one of these picks out of our hand. You can wear it around your neck if you'd like. You can put it on your keychain or on your bulletin board. But you'll be saying, as people look at you walking down the halls, as you're with that boyfriend of yours, you're with that girlfriend, he is my song. And people go, what do you mean by that? And you can say, he is Jesus. And he is my song. I'm going to pray with you that if God calls your heart to commit your life to Christ today, then I'm going to invite you to come. Lord Jesus, you sang our song. And God, you sang our song as they whipped you beyond, literally beyond recognition with those Roman whips. And you became our song as you took that crown of thorns where you would bleed and your blood would forgive us of every mistake we've ever made, I the most of all. And there on that cross for me and for any teenager in this arena today, you would say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And you would cancel our sin. And then best of all, God, you would put your spirit out there for any receive, receiver to receive, for any believer to believe. And so Jesus, today, I invite your kids. I invite your lost sheep who've been singing other songs, your lost kids who've been singing bad songs and pornographic songs and marijuana songs and alcoholic songs and sexual songs. I invite you to bring us to this cross where those songs end forever. And when we get to start singing one song of purity and faith and forgiveness. So to you kids out there, if God wants to, if you want God to be your song, before you come, you pray an eternal prayer. You say, dear Jesus, today I'm coming home. Today you're going to be my song. I ask you to forgive me for all those other songs I've been singing. I believe that you literally died for my old songs. Today I ask your Holy Spirit to come into my heart and give me a new song that I plan to sing until I meet you face to face. You are my Lord, you are my Savior, you are my King. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God invites you.